Consider this question from an experience out of the life of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. And the question is simply this, do you want to get out of the wilderness? I suppose you know that I have a site online where I post some of my sermons. It's connected to our website, our church website. And if you go to the pastor devotion section of our church website, it takes you automatically to another website where I post my sermons. It's called Find Soul Rest. This year alone, over 19,000 people from all over the world have visited that site. It does a little tracking for me. It tells me not only how many people have visited, but it gives me the general idea of where they live, what country they live in, whether they live in Ireland or India or Brazil or, or wherever that might be. And then it also tracks what articles they read. I know how many articles have been read, which ones have been read, and how many times each one have been read. And without fail, every day, the most read article on that site is an article about the wilderness. It's, the, it's entitled, The Purpose of the Wilderness in the Lives of God's People. Uh, and if you just Google, that site, that, that article has been read so many times that if you just Google the purpose of the wilderness in the Bible, one of the first sites that you'll come up with in a Google search is Find Soul Rest, and it will lead you directly to that article, The Purpose of the Wilderness in the Lives of God's People. The reason I bring that up to you is to let you know that Apparently, I'm not the only person who's ever felt like that he was in a spiritual wilderness. We all are in that place in our lives sometimes. Uh, that article on the wilderness has been viewed just this year over 14,000 times. While the wilderness does have a purpose in our lives, it is not the end goal of God's uh, for our life. There is a discomfort there, uh, an unsettledness there that, that makes us feel as if we're going to fall short of the will of God and the plan of God if we don't get out of that wilderness. Moses spent, as you will remember, 40 years in the wilderness herding sheep. He spent another 40 years in the wilderness herding men. But those last 40 years of his life, he spent pursuing God's purpose. Although Moses experienced God in the wilderness, he met God at the burning bush, he met with God on Mount Sinai, nevertheless, Moses felt like that there would be greater experiences of God awaiting him in the promised land. It was the passion of his heart to be there. He felt as if the greatness and power and glory of God would be displayed in the promised land like it had never been displayed in the wilderness. As you know, wilderness life is day to day. It is filled with uncertainty. Life seems to be going nowhere in the wilderness. It can be uh, confusing and discouraging and disheartening, even if you know that God is somehow present. But we can't always see where God is or what he's doing while we're in the wilderness. So for 40 years, we have this story in our Bible of how Moses followed God through the wilderness, but he wanted more. He wanted the promised land. He wanted the fullness of God's blessing and power and presence. He wanted more than he was experiencing in the wilderness. Should you be wanting more out of your own experience with God, out of your own relationship with God? If you're in the wilderness, is that where God intends to leave you? Is that God's original intent? 
for your life? Or is there some promised land living available for you? Well, in the third chapter of Deuteronomy, we find Moses pleading with God to get him out of the wilderness. He prayed, O oh Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such mighty acts as yours? Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan, the good hill country, and Lebanon. That prayer of Moses is found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. Do you ever have those moments in your life when you just feel like you're in a wilderness and you say, God, would you please get me out of this wilderness? I know there must be more for my own spiritual life and my own spiritual journey. When we enter a spiritual wilderness, our sojourn there can last for an extended period of time. Maybe you sense that you are in some kind of fast spiritual wilderness, always short of where God wants you to be. But you know that beyond you, there is a greater experience of God. But right now, you're in the wilderness. Well, here's the key question. Is that where God wants you to stay? Is that God's will for you? And that's all there is, simply to live in the wilderness. Well, what was God's plan for Moses? What was his original plan? And was this request of Moses to be able to go into the promised land, was it outside the will of God for Moses' life? Well, let me remind you that Moses had walked within the will of God for 40 years. 40 years earlier, when he began his service with the Lord, it had been God's intent for Moses to enter the promised land. It was not God's will for him to spend his life in the wilderness or die in the wilderness. So Moses just kept on pleading with God on the basis of this original intention that God had for his life. But if you know the story, you know that something happened that altered the will of God for Moses' life. Here is God's response to the passionate pleading of Moses to enter the promised land. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 26 through 28. Moses said, But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me and said to me, Enough, speak to me no more of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift up your eyes to the west and the north and the south and the east and see it with your eyes for you shall not cross over this Jordan, but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go across ahead of the people. He will give them as an inheritance the land which you will see. And Moses prayed this prayer. Was he praying in keeping with God's original intention for his life? Yes, he was. It was God's will all along that Moses entered the promised land. So what changed that, that hindered Moses from this tremendous spiritual privilege? Do you ever wonder about your own life? You're in a wilderness. Your family's in a wilderness. Somehow you feel like your church is in a wilderness. And perhaps that God has deemed, like he did for Moses, that you will never get out of the wilderness. Remember, there was a way out of the wilderness. There were those who were going to the promised land. Joshua was going. Caleb was going. A whole generation of people uh, were going to the promised land. They would experience God there. They would see him work mightily, displaying his promises and displaying his power. But Moses wouldn't go. Moses couldn't go. Moses was prevented by God from entering the promised land. You and I need to be praying that God would allow us to get out of the wilderness. You ought to pray to get out of the wilderness personally. You ought to pray that prayer for your family. But you also ought to be praying that prayer for your church. That needs to be the desire of every heart. God, get me out of this wilderness. 
and get me to the place where you want me to be in my own spiritual life. Get my church out of this wilderness by whatever means necessary. I remind you that it was not just Moses who missed the promised land. It was a whole generation of people who came out of Egypt with Moses. God never wanted these people to die in the wilderness, but they did. When God opened the door for them to leave the wilderness, it required they take some steps of faith. But you'll remember those people were not willing to take those steps or to do the things that God called them to do. Across the next year, as we look ahead into 2022, we need to be praying that God would lead us out of the wilderness in our own individual spiritual lives and that God would do a new and exciting work in our lives and in our church. Is that the will of God for us? Yes, revival is within the will of God for the church as certainly as it was originally in the will of God for Moses to go into the promised land. But why did Moses lose that opportunity? And why, what might cause us to lose an opportunity for a greater experience with God than the one he wants for us? Does God want us to stay in the wilderness or does God want us to experience revival? Could sin in your life keep you out of a spiritual promised land and in a spiritual wilderness? Remember, Moses was a man of God. Moses was a friend of God. Moses had an intimate relationship with God, but because of one act of disobedience, Moses was barred from the promised land. Now, that's not the same thing as being shut out of heaven. Moses didn't lose that, but what Moses did lose was a significant spiritual opportunity. A door remained closed that could have been opened. But for Moses, that door was shut, and it was shut because of one sin. So I ask you, is there some sin that could close the door to revival in your life? Some one sin, one sin that you cherish more than you cherish God. You would rather hold on to that one sin than to have the greatest blessing that God could give you. You would rather to continue to walk in misery in a spiritual wilderness rather than experience revival because your passion for that one sin is greater than your personal passion for God. We have people in the church who will never have a mighty encounter with God in their life. They will never experience revival in this life. They will never know the joy of promised land living that God intends for them. They will not miss heaven, but they are missing and they will continue to miss the fullness of life in Christ. They will not lose their salvation, but they will lose the opportunity to have a taste of heaven here. You will never know what God could have done in your life. You will never know what God could have done in your church. You will never experience the wind of the Spirit moving mightily in your midst. I remind you that God not only deals with individuals this way, but also with his people collectively. Remember, a whole generation of people died in the wilderness people for whom it was, an origi it was originally the plan of God to enter the promised land. They all died in the wilderness because of their disobedience. Sometimes that which was once the will of God for us is withheld from us because an act of disobedience or a string of disobediences have caused us to come under the discipline of God. After that, no matter how desperately we want it, no matter how earnestly we pray for it, no matter how urgently we need it, it can never be ours because our disobedience has barred us from God's blessings. The church that fails to have revival won't miss heaven 
It will simply die in the wilderness. How tragic is that? Moses missed what had originally been the will of God for his life. What about you? And what about your church? Is there something more to the Christian life than this wilderness experience that you're living in right now? Could you be missing the blessing of promised land living? I ask you that question in light of the experience of these children of Israel in the wilderness that never made it into the promised land. God had said the promised land flowed with milk and honey. Did the land flow with milk and honey? Yes. Were there stalks of grapes that were so large that it would take two men to carry them? Yes. Was it a place where God would reveal himself uh, more miraculously than in the wilderness? Yes. Would he part the Jordan for them as he had parted the Red Sea? Yes. Would he cause the walls of their enemy cities to come tumbling down? Yes. Would God cause the sun to stand still so that they could be victorious in their battles? Yes. There were greater encounters with God that waited for them in the promised land. But Moses would never know the joy of promised land living because of one act of disobedience that hindered God's will for his life. So I ask you, is promised land living available for the church today? Is revival with, within the will of God for his church? Is it possible for Christians in the 21st century to experience God and to see him work mightily? Yes, all of those things are available. All of those things are possible, but I need to adjust my life and you need to adjust your life so that we can get out of the wilderness. So I want you to pray for an encounter with God that changes the way you look at church. I want you to pray for an encounter with God that changes the way you look at God. I want you to pray that an for an encounter with God that, that is so life-changing that it changes the way people look at you. In fact, that it changes the way that people in this community look at our church. A Christian who has never had such an encounter with God is a Christian in the wilderness. A church that has never had such an encounter with God is a church in the wilderness. Those folks won't miss heaven. They'll just miss a taste of heaven here. They won't lose their salvation, but they will lose their experience of the fullness of life in Christ. I remind you that the writer of Hebrews cautioned us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. He said, Therefore we must have before us that fear, that while the promise, the promise of entering his rest remains open, one or another among you should be found to have missed his chance. Think of that. You could miss your chance to enter God's rest, to enter and experience God's best, just like Moses missed his chance to enter the promised land. You could miss your chance, your opportunity to get out of a spiritual wilderness. God's original plan for the whole congregation was for them to enter the promised land, but because of their disobedience, they died in the wilderness. I remind you that if there is some sin in your life that you cherish more than revival, more than God, then you will surely miss the opportunity as surely as Moses missed the promised land. Until you allow God to deal with that sin, until you confess it and forsake it, you will never have a mighty encounter with God. Should you fail to deal with that sin, you won't miss heaven. You will just miss the fullness of life in Christ. You will miss the mighty work of God in your life and in your church. The church that fails to have revival won't miss heaven, but it will die in the wilderness. Don't let that happen to your church. Don't let that happen in your life. Start asking God to do a radical new work in your life.
today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.